something else we've been sort of asking everyone very broadly speaking and um you know it's uh, you know maybe it's at this point kind of layman's terms for everyone but exactly understanding the risk of COVID-19 infection or um you know just some of the other uh, current health issues and concerns we're seeing in the country what exactly does it look like in terms of uh, sickle cell disease patients how much more at risk are they um how severe are cases and instances where there is infection so obviously, everyone is very concerned about uh, the risk. Uh, uh, we think that patients who have uh, sickle cell disease are particularly high risk uh, for having this complication. So we know that it actually affects people of African descent much uh, more frequently. They have more severe manifestations. And um, many, in the, most individuals who have sickle cell disease in the US are of African descent. And so, um, so we do worry that these patients can get very, very sick. Uh, so one of the most, one of the, Complications of sickle cell disease is something called acute chest syndrome, where they can have what looks like a mnemonic type process. So they have um, like a pneumonia, except that it's much more severe than what would be a typical pneumonia in the general population. Uh, and so um, uh, because of the concern, so we, we are very, very, um, uh, uh, for one, have very low threshold to, uh, in terms of patients having problems like this. And we feel like patients who have who are diagnosed with COVID-19 should be managed very aggressively. Having said that, um, I think several areas in the country have been hit much harder than others, right? So um, New York and New Jersey, and I guess some parts of California initially. Um, so I live in Memphis, Tennessee, and uh, so far we've been relatively lucky. Um, so although there are several cases, uh, we haven't really had many of our patients uh, um, infected. And amongst those patients who have been infected, they've had very mild clinical manifestations. So uh, we've been lucky from that point of view. But I know that there are several reports of patients uh, with sickle cell disease have been infected and have gotten very sick. So, um, so, so it's something we take very seriously, obviously. Excellent, thank you. And, and I'm glad you brought up the racial disparity too in terms of sickle cell disease affected patients. Um, obviously it's something that every day with the uh, new COVID infection rates and numbers and, and other uh, headlines uh, dominating um, US news cycles is, is really putting a, a light on the, the severe disparity in, in healthcare in the country. Um, Doc, can you can you talk um, if if we were to talk a little bit more positively about um, you know some some take home messages how we start to improve uh, speaking particularly to sickle cell disease the, the the disparity that we see in patients what what sort of I guess actions do we need to put into place to improve on, on that? Well, I mean, for one, I'm not an expert in that area, but I would say that there's lots of work that needs to be done. Obviously, so uh, lots of things that we need to do. So for one. Um, um, we need to try and develop, um, and we need to, invest, need to be more investment in the development of uh, drug therapies uh, and curative therapies for sickle cell disease. I think um, uh, recently there has been an increased push towards developing cures for sickle cell disease. So there is actually a cure for sickle cell disease, uh, which is um, bone marrow transplant therapy. And we think that gene therapy can also be a curative uh, treatment modality in patients with sickle cell disease. And there's actually been a big push um, uh, towards gene therapy in sickle cell disease. So um, having cures um, for patients is important because then they don't have to deal with the long-term consequences of the disease. So that's one. Having said that, um, most people who have sickle cell disease um, do not reside in the United States. So I know we are built both based in the US, but um, I also kind of think about sickle cell disease globally, right? And so most individuals who have sickle cell disease do not reside in the US, uh, most of them don't reside in Sub-Saharan Africa and in India and other parts of the world, but those um, two areas are particularly. And in those parts, um, um, these patients, most of them can't afford um, curative therapies like bone marrow transplant or um, gene therapy. And so it's important that um, uh, we continue to push um, for the development of drug therapies that can modify the severity of disease. And um, so when we develop these drugs, it's important that this patient should be able to have access to these drugs uh, because new drugs that have come out very expensive. You know? um, so thankfully, at least in this part, many patients have some kind of insurance and amongst those who do not have insurance or do not have private insurance, uh, they might have some kind of government um, type insurance. Uh, or they might be able to get some kind of assistance from the company uh, towards being able to get the drug. But many of these um, modalities are not available in resource limited areas, you know. And so when drugs are developed, it's important that um, 
patients are able to get access to the drugs. So not only should the drugs be effective and safe, but they should be affordable as well. You know? yeah. um, so I mean, I think um, because I'm not an expert on these priorities, I try to think, stick to the sickle cell part you know, and leave the other parts to people who think about that a lot more. But I think that that's an important consideration, obviously. Yeah.